Free stuff. I don't think I have to say much more than that. Today is all about how you can get free things for your productions, but then also what we can't use and why. Copyright gives uh, a creator the exclusive rights to use and distribute his or her own work. Which means that we can't just go on the internet and find something that we want and use it in our productions. At least not without the creator's permission. And if you do get permission, a great idea is to make sure you get it in writing, even if it's someone that you know. Okay, but let's say you're out there filming and there's a specific clip that you're after that would visualize something you're saying really well, but you haven't been able to film it yourself. So what do you do then? Well, the quick solution is that there's multiple websites online where you can go and actually buy media. Problem is, it can get pretty pricey and if you're working on a budget, this might not be possible. And now is the time when you go and wish that there was free stuff for you to access. And there are. But let me just start by saying that there are multiple ways and definitions of how something can be free. So let me just try and explain the basics of things that are good to look out for. Public domain is work that has basically been freed from copyright and made available usually for free, but sometimes with some limitations. And there are three common ways a work can end up in the public domain. The first one is that the copyright has expired. The time it takes for the copyright to expire is a little bit of a jungle though, depending on factors like if the work was ever published or unpublished. In most countries that have signed the Berne Convention, the general rule is that a copyright expires either 50 or 70 years after the death of the author. In the US, the 7 year rule applies most of the time, but not always. So before you go and think that a clip is in the public domain just because it's old, make sure to check the specific rules for that clip. And now you're probably wondering why doesn't he just give us all the different categories right now and we'll be done with it. But the thing is that there are so many different little categories that if I did, this video would probably be about three times as long and you wouldn't watch the rest of the video. You would click away and do something else and I don't want that. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to add a link uh, below and uh, take a look at that and you'll probably see what I mean. Really useful information though. Luckily, there are many large archives that supply old footage that has been cleared for public domain. For example, Pond5 has a whole section dedicated to public domain clips that I think are great if you're after historic stuff. Another great source for public domain clips is the Prelinger archives. Another way something can end up in a public domain is if it has been produced by a governmental organization. I should point out though that this doesn't apply to all governments, but if we take the US for example, governmental organizations like NASA or NOAA have large public domain archives with footage that can be accessed and used by anyone for free. There are some copyrighted exceptions though in these archives, but uh, these are usually pretty clearly marked so you wouldn't miss it. So let's say you're shooting a video on space and for obvious reasons it's pretty hard for most of us to go and film that ourselves, then it's really handy to know that we have all this footage available to us for free on for example the NASA website. But remember that you usually have to give credit to the organization and sometimes even the photographer, even if it's works from the government. A third way something can end up in the public domain is through donation. A creator simply donates the right to use their works. And here I really have to mention the incredible work by Mitch Martinez. This is one example of great footage that has generously been made available to the public. But note that even if a work has been made free to the public, there is frequently some kind of license that comes with the media with limitations to how the works can be used. And so is the case with Mitch Martinez, of course. So make sure you submit a license agreement form. It's super easy and also for him to keep track of who uses his media. Another popular page is Wikimedia Commons, a page that I sometimes use for still images and sometimes for graphics. But just like before, there's almost always some kind of license that you have to agree with first before you start using the media. And these licenses are almost always what is called Creative Commons. All right, let me try to explain this. To link to the license, you will find one or more of these icons telling us what we can and cannot do with the media. For example, if a work is fully public domain, if you have to give credit, if you may or may not use it for commercial purposes, and what you can do with what is called derivative works based on an original piece. Take this classic example of Da Vinci's Mona Lisa. 
So here's the original Mona Lisa, and here's the derivative work made by Marcel Duchamp in 1919. Right now, there are seven combinations of Creative Commons licenses. And I say right now because this has changed in the past and it could just as well change in the future as well. So make sure you always double check so you know for sure what you can and cannot do with the media. You may also encounter other similar licenses like Free Cultural Works, which works pretty much the same as Creative Commons, or GNU, which is usually for software. That was a really quick introduction to the jungle of media licenses, but I hope it's gonna help you in your search for some free content for your films. This video is part of uh, a series of videos that we're doing together with the Our Rock Project. So I uh, highly encourage you to check out the other videos that we have on the channel if you wanna get started in filmmaking. Also remember that one of the most important things for you to follow when you make your films is copyright rules and regulations. Seriously, don't get yourself into trouble by using some, something you're not allowed to use. It's not worth it. And it is really good for the filmmaking community too if we follow the, these rules. And to get you started, I am gonna put some links uh, down in the text below, uh, links to some really good free content that you can use in your films. Thanks for watching and good luck.